Brusosbrand.com, where the pros are the pros. The brilliant Taylor Hendricks. Next question is, what do I think is missing from wrestling today? The art. The art is missing from wrestling, okay? And what do I mean by that? Okay, wrestling is competitive. It's a performance art. But at the end of the day, it's 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 a an artistic sport basically and i think the art is missing from wrestling okay there is a difference between being a pro wrestler and a sports entertainer and what i think a lot of people in the wrestling business miss is the fact that sports entertainer makes and draws more money than a pro wrestler and i see a lot of pro wrestlers get angry when you know people from other industries come in and get big positions on television and huge paydays and all this other stuff and they're like well i've been in here i've been training i've been doing this that and the other i've already signed how come that couldn't have been me well there's many reasons why it wasn't you are you providing that same sort of value and eyeballs and money and generation that that (laughs) star from a different industry is going to bring to the company If the answer is no, then instead of complaining about it, what are you actually doing about it? So then that could be your spot. I think people are forgetting the performance art of it. You know, um, Al Snow, who's a part of the brand family, used to teach so many awesome things in, in, in this regard. You know, what are you going to do that's going to fill up the nosebleed seats as well as the front row? What are you doing? And also, I think a lot of people, because they don't teach us in independent wrestling schools, and most of them anyway, is how to create a brand. Like, your look your gear how you show up to shows how you leave to shows all of that matters dress for the position you want not the one you have right um invest in your gear like if you look like shiz it then you're you're the company that decided to book you looks like shiz it um and then like why would anybody take a chance on you right um the other thing is is creating a brand it's not just about the moves you do in the ring it's why you do them what they look like does it make sense for the gimmick that you were supposed to have like you need to have a cohesive brand like when someone sees something i can guarantee they can be like oh that's Taylor Hendricks. Whether it's the outfit I wore or the photograph I had or the type of match style and wrestling style that I had, I took from influences, but I was never a carbon copy of anything. And that is missing, okay? You can't be the next Trish Stratus. She already exists, you know? Uh, You can't be the next uh, Brock Lesnar. He already exists. But you can take inspiration from different people, different pop culture things, and come up with something that's uniquely your own that is marketable for a company to be able to invest in and be confident that they're going to see a return on their investment, AKA an ROI. All right, if if they're gonna sign you for thousands upon thousands of dollars and they're not gonna have a return on their investment, that's just them flushing money down the proverbial toilet, okay? It is a business. If you are not putting butts in the seats, you're not good for business. You know, if you can't sell tickets, you're not good for business. And the people that are in the main event have the most responsibility on the entire card. Okay, they're the ones that most of the people are coming to see. All right, and and a card should flow in that manner. You know, the opening match on a card, all of it from the opening to the main event should all lead up to the main event. It's all supposed to be cohesively put together, wrestling as such. You have to have a larger than life personality. Uh, Betty Davis used to say uh, acting should be larger than life. Scripts should be larger than life. Wrestling's the same way, all right? And a lot of people, they just don't understand that art of it, okay? Um, And there's a very big difference, you know, each company has their own demographic, but a lot of not a lot of wrestling schools teach that, okay? And not a lot of wrestlers understand to kind of adapt their their match psychology to where they are. They don't, they're not really necessarily taught that. That doesn't mean change your gimmick and who you are depending on where you are, no. It just means you change the flow a bit. You change the type of story you're going to tell in the ring with your moves and your acting and your gimmick and your character. You know, you're not necessarily going to wrestle in Memphis, Tennessee, the same thing you would in, in uh, Japan. Okay, you're not going to wrestle the same way in Los Angeles that you would in South Carolina. All right, you know, East and West Coast, they have their own style. Down South has their own style. The Midwest kind of has a hybrid style, so forth and so on. There's a spot, any, okay, I'm going to take, uh, you know, something out of Ratatouille really quick, which is going to sound kind of funny, but anybody can wrestle. Anybody can learn moves and wrestle. 
not everyone can be a superstar. All right. And if you are, you know, the next generation coming in, there is no excuse for you to not have charisma. There is no excuse for not for you to not be able to cut a believable promo that would make people want to spend their hard earned money. Like Al Snow says, to want to buy a ticket, then spend their more hard earned money of the gas money after they've already worked such a long ass day, go to the venue, sit at the venue, pay even more money because they probably didn't even have dinner yet. Sit in the seats for hours on end, then possibly buy merchandise, then spend more of their hard earned gas money to get home after a long night sit in traffic and all this other stuff. What are you doing that's going to inspire somebody to want to do that, to see you, to meet you, to cheer you, to boo you, etc., so forth and so on. It's all connected. Anybody can learn how to wrestle. Not everyone has what it takes to be a superstar. Um, and I think that that is definitely that that art is missing from today's wrestling. And that's why you, you see that in the in the numbers. You see that in the numbers, you know, um, WWE at one point was beating the number one program on television, which was the NFL. Now it's it's not even close. Um, so there's there's but there's things that we could do that could bring that back. It's all it's all about the vision and where you're going and how, how to make it make sense. Right.